This is Dan's ultimate fish. The cord is social. But Gigantica has this air of mystery. Seventy-five and a half. Blue <laughs> army! <Blimey! laughs> well, it's rare that on a Spooner's vlog you'll see me with a beer in my hand, but this is no ordinary Spooner's vlog. Not only is it the Christmas special, but it's taking place at Gigantica on the Corder Social. Loads and loads of Corder employees split across both lakes, but this vlog is going to be a little bit different. On this one, on the main lake, you're going to have myself, Dovey. Oh, if the sun comes out, can you stop filming? Because he's glare. You won't get any, any recordable footage. Just stop. Is it going to be like this all week? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and Mr. Fairbrass, we're going to catch as many fish as we can. And for every fish we catch, it's going to equate to a prize for you lot at home. We'll let you have some more details as the vlog goes on. Cheers. There are eight prizes up for grabs. One for a double figure fish, another for a 20 pounder, a different one for a 30 pounder, and so on, all the way up to an 80 pounder. Let's see how we got on in the draw. So, somebody's got to be last, um, but I have to say, my brain's in a very good place at the moment, and I knew that whatever I got dealt, I was gonna make the absolute best of it. So, I've, I've picked the stink, the last person gets two swims, I've picked the stink as my first choice, and then I've got big girls as my backup. How many I think I'll catch for the week? That is a toughie. I'll be happy with half a dozen. And then the other two, obviously Dovey being Dovey, he's got an Alcatraz again, bless him. I'd like to think he'll have at least a dozen out of there, if not more. And then Spoons has gone in Oblivion, which has got loads of form. I think he's done seven fish last week. There's a lovely spot out there. I'd like to think he'll catch 10 out of it this week. So. Those are my predictions. Let's say I'm, I'm completely wrong and we'll catch loads more. Draw went well. If you come out in the first half, there's 12 people fishing, you come out in the first half, you're happy. I come out fifth, I got back in Alcatraz, and I say back in Alcatraz because I was actually fishing here about five or six weeks ago. It is one of the middle swims, it is very consistent, and if you can fish it well at range, it does do bites. So, I'll have to do some predictions. My predictions this week, and more of a target as well for me, is I'm gonna say my lucky number's 11, and I think 11 fish would be good out of here. 13 or 14 bites would be great. 11 fish landed, beautiful. Spooner, I'd expect Spooner to get 10 bites out of there if he does very well. Dan, he's come out last. He's in stink. I would say five fish would be great. I'm gonna go for eight bites. Seems a bit heavy, but you've got to, you know, you've got to, you've got to feel confident in what you're doing. Dovey, he's in Alcatraz, which is a great swim, and I'm going to have him down for 12 bites, and he's going to, he's going to land all of them. Now the gaffer's come out last. He's got one of my favourite swims on the lake in the Stink, one I've fished a few times. I think he'll end up staying in, in Stink for almost the whole trip. I think he'll fish it relatively long, very tidy, and I'm going to have him down for. I have him down for seven fish, but he's going to catch a biggie. Feels about right. Found the new podcast to listen to. Yeah. It's called Chatterbix, and it's David Earl and Joe Wilkinson. Five days a week, they do 25 minutes and then just turn it off. And it's just them rambling utter nonsense. I'm 40 episodes in. Some days you think, why am I listening to this? Then every now and then something happens. Sure, like, that's why. Just to hear them two in hysterics. Stuff that's not even always that funny. We just drive along, having a right old laugh. Dubby hated it. Of course he did. Weren't about Bitcoin or golf. First day is always a hectic day. You've had very little sleep, lots of driving. 
buzz in for the draw, you get into your swim and it takes you know a good few hours to find your spots, get your bait out, get your rods and your rigs ready. But when it's all done, I mean, can't say it's my first fish, you saw me drinking one earlier, but my first for a good few hours, this is the one that feels like you've, you've earned it the most. And while sea socials are all about exactly that, having a good time, because we want to win all of you lovely viewers as many prizes as we possibly can, me, Fairbrass and Dovey are under a bit, are under a bit of pressure. But pressure's a privilege. We want to make it a Merry Christmas for you all, so we are going to fish as hard as we possibly can to make sure we can give you as many prizes as we possibly can. Cheers. As is often the case on the first night on Gigantica, it's been pretty quiet. Nothing for me, in fact, nothing for almost everybody. But thankfully, the gaffer got off the mark with a lovely 34 pounder. Yeah, man, check that out. Last out of the draw, but the first one to get a bite. 34 pounds, one ounce, on one of the short rods I'm fishing at 14 wraps. This is the one cast off to the left and a couple of hours into darkness, it is away. I am chuffed to bits. But now we're going to pass you over to Spooner and he's going to tell you what the first lucky person has won. Nice work, Dan. And let's have a look at that first prize. Drum roll, please. One lucky person is getting their hands on a dry core bundle. Stay tuned to find out how to enter the prize draw. Now, whilst Dan's the only one that's off the mark on the main lake, there has been a few fish out over on the road lake. And there's another competition running for everyone else. It's not just about what me, Dovey and Dan catch for your prizes. There is a trophy on offer for whoever catches the biggest fish across both lakes. I'd love to win it, but so far I think there's been a fish of over 40 pound on the road lake that is leading the charge at the minute. That is going to get beaten. This right here is exactly what the quarter social and coming to Gigantica is all about. We've come down into Big Southerly to celebrate in Mike Isted's success. He's got one of the A team in the net. We don't know how big it is yet. It might be a 70 pounder. What it does mean is he's got to buy us all the KFC for catching a PB. Cheers, Mike, give away. What's PB? 56. You just pipped it, mate. Go on. 71 and a half. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lift the fish slightly because the belly's just in the water. That's it, that's it. They're the ones, mate. They're the ones, yes. Mate, the colours are amazing. Matt's out in the shop. Go on. Well held, Michael. That was an absolutely mega fish for Mike. Two times, 71 and a half pound. And as I said up there, that's exactly what these socials are all about. Wolfie's also off the mark with a low 30 and with Dan's mid 30 from last night. That's a pretty successful start for the first night on the main lake. I've had my first bite as well. Unfortunately, it was a bream. Not going to panic about that yet. They're obviously swimming around with the carp as well. At least I know the spot's clean. But I took that opportunity of the middle rod going to bring all of them in. Check the rigs are not kinked, that they're all laying okay. Then it's a case of just refreshing them. I'm not, I'm not changing the hook baits around, just gonna put them back out. Um, and from what I've been told from the bailiffs, this swim did nearly all of its carp bites last week during the daylight. So, fresh hook baits out this morning, little bit of bait over the top, see what the day brings.
So a bit of a quiet first night for me. You wouldn't really expect many the first day because you made a lot of disturbance. Everyone's finding their spots, putting a lot of spoms out. So anything the first night is a bit of a bonus to be honest. So that's the reason I'm not despondent about not catching. I put out quite a lot of bait yesterday and the spot I'm fishing out there isn't quite the same as it was when I fished here five, I think it was about five weeks ago. I had a big weed bed out there um, and now the weeds die down a little bit and it's quite flat, which isn't ideal. I'd prefer a bigger weed bed out there to fish next to. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep to the same spot. I did also only put out maize last night to see if they were switched onto maize and not boilies. So um, if I don't catch anything today, I'll put some fish meal boilies in my mix as well um, and see if that makes a difference. But for now, I'm gonna relax and chill and uh, enjoy the first couple of days because Mike has caught a 70 pounder and there's been a few other bites around the lake. So a very, very good start, I'd say. Unlike Dovey, Fairbrass was opting to fish several different spots. The early part of the week, he was going to fish shore, allowing the carp to come into the stink's water, whilst also baiting a spot further out. Callum Sharp in Alamo, which is between Dan and I, was also topping up his spot. And whilst all that disturbance was going on, I managed my first proper bite. I was just down with Callum, watching him redo his rods. Had a couple of bleeps on the right hander, and we are in to a gigantic carp. I'm so unfit, I've only run 100 yards. I've run a marathon. And you probably assume by my physique that I'm naturally like henching that and really fit. I'm not, really not. Pressing some bait. And Spooner looks like he's got one on, so I'm gonna jump on the scooter and head around now. I think I'm gonna see what he's got. That does do day bites that swim, so perfect time for him. Now the gaffer has already unlocked the prize for a 30 pound carp. So for you guys watching at home, you need really, you want this to be something other than a 30 pounder. Let us see what it is. Love that lead waving around. <laughs> With barbed inside. Yeah. <laughs> Yes! Hey, well done, Spoons. Ah. Oh. What a tickle. Yes! A little fat one. Well, big fat one. Cabbage. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's over 30 pound. If it's in the 40 pound bracket, that is another prize bundle opened up for somebody. Let's have a look. Good news for everyone. I'm off the mark and it's a 42 pounder. So it's good news for you as well. That is a proper brute and we're off the mark. 42 pound, unbelievably, we think it's a stocky. Grow so quick in here. One down, seven to go. Mm, actually, Spooner, you have eight more to go. But before you get another bite, let everyone know what's in the 40 pounder bundle. All right then, Dovey, eight more. And the 40 pound bundle is a dark camo luggage bundle. How many more prizes can we unlock? Just about to go up for dinner. In fact, we're gonna be late for dinner now, but Callum is into a bite. Well, he's not into a bite, he's into a fish. He's had a bite and he's into a fish. You know what I mean?
Hey, well done, Cal. Hey, well done, Cal. Yay. He's off the last one, too. Well, that is the result, and that is Callum's first Gigantica carp, 29.12. We don't know if it's got a name yet, but if it <laughs> hasn't, as soon as we're both Ipswich fans, what's it going to be called, Cal? Blue Army! Blue Army! <laughs> anyway, we're going to get some pictures, go and have our dinner, because he's now made us late. <laughs> <laughs> carefully sinking the line. Three rods have gone out. I actually hit a fish on the way down on the right hand rod. I put out eight midi X's over each of these short rods earlier on, about an hour before dinner. It's now about an hour after dinner, so they've had a good couple of hours. So they've got straight on that bait. Hopefully it was a carp that I hit. Callum's off the mark. That's his first fish out of Gigantica. Always a nervous time for someone playing their first one, but well done to him. He's fishing really tidy in there. You know, he's uh, he's very sort of uh, bashful, very unassuming, but he's a tasty angler. When you just look at his setup, everything is just so. You know, the attention to detail is there. Baited the long area as well. I put another 45 uh, midi spawns out on the long area. And the fact that Callum's caught one at exactly the same range, only 40 yards away, means that unless I smash it on these rods tonight, if I catch one or two, I'm going long. If I catch half a dozen, I'm staying short. Confidence was high amongst all anglers around both lakes as they set their rods for the night ahead. Dovey, though, was contemplating a little tactical change. Sun's going down and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So I just have a little bit of a change up on one of my rods. I've kept two rods long on that spot, put a few boilies out instead of just maize. And then there was an area that they kept showing last night, which evidently is about 17 wraps out and exactly the same area that I caught a few fish when I was here last. So I put the marker out, found some weed exactly at that range, clipped up just before it. Then I'm putting about, probably about a kilo of bait around it. Not as much as the other spot and hopefully I can nick an extra bite, you never know. Sometimes it's worth hedging your bets instead of having all three rods on a spot that hasn't yet produced a bite. So we'll know more in the morning. Fruit waffle heated up on top of your coffee in the morning is an incredible way to start the day. That's probably not the update you're after, but on the fishing front, another relatively quiet night last night, but a bit of good news for you. Dovey's off the mark. I think he's got a 30 pounder in the sling now. And whilst that doesn't unlock a fresh prize for anybody, the gaffer has one in the net, which I think is about 28 pounds, something like that. Well chuffed to get him. It's nice to catch a couple short while we're baiting long, but the fish have been all over that long area. They're out there again now, it's slicking up. I've seen a couple of fish show. So it's time to mobilize the army, get the big guns out and go long. Being the first 20 we've caught between us, that does unlock another prize. So I'd say for two nights in, three prizes unlocked already. I reckon it's going all right. He is absolutely beautiful. Big old scales on the side of it. He's 34 pounds, so unfortunately it doesn't mean there's any more unlocked prizes for you lot, but for now we'll do. Hasn't been a mad start to the week really, it's been a bit slow, but the weather's hot, the moon phase isn't great. We've got all of the good stuff coming, good weather, good moon phase, so this is beautiful.
With the carp continuing to show long out in front of Fairbrass, he wasted no time in getting the rods out onto the long spot. And whilst he worked hard on the fishing front, we worked very hard on the social front. I'm working hard. You know we said label up the fishing gear like Callum has? Yeah, yeah. Someone yeah. labelled a bed chair. Bed chair. Sun protection all week. Fish on, fish on. <laughs> so you've baited for two days out long, Dan. You've yep. not actually put a rig in position until what, two, two hours ago, if that? Less than an hour. What's the time? It's quarter to two. I think I finished up. Yeah, I think I finished at one o'clock. I'm not going to lie. There's been a little bit of a social going on next door. Yeah, I've not... heard. <laughs> I've heard. I can hear Spence. Yeah, always. He lost his crocs in the lake somehow. Did he? Weird. That'll be the alcohol, will it? <laughs> it will definitely, <laughs> definitely be the alcohol. He helped someone land a fish earlier, Dan. He, Did he? He got, he got back to swim late on the road lake, and someone in the pool of the goo was playing the fish, and he thought to himself. Uh, it's shallow. I'll help that person. Shallow. He took a step, and in his words to me earlier, he was very quickly up to his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but he landed it. Oh, Thank you, Spence. Oh, mate, and for you watching at home, you really need this to be a double or something that's £50 plus, because that's going to unlock another prize for a lovely little Christmas gift. Merry Christmas, by the way. He's the beauty gigantic and we say it all the time, but yeah, whenever you hook a fish out of this place, your legs turn to jelly. We've all been fortunate enough to catch lots and lots of lovely big carp, but Gigantica has this air of mystery. You don't know if you're playing a stocky that's been in here for a year, or if you're playing one of the originals that could be an absolute enormadon. Yeah, and that's so the beauty. No worries, yeah, mate. mate. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> in case you can't tell, I've had a few beers next door. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, can you imagine the, just imagine yeah, the cheers, photo. Oh, cheers, 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 cheers. <laughs> I don't want to make this a sales pitch, but are they uh, 12 foot six Kaisens in the four pound Tesco? They are, mate, yeah. Mm, mm, love, nice rods, I'm just saying. They're love lovely. Yeah. Beautiful they yeah. are. What yeah. line you got on, Dan? <laughs> I'm just asking, I'm just asking. I've, I've got, um, yep. ESP Synchro, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, this is backfired. <laughs> long chuck? I've got tapered long chuck on, yeah. Of course you have. Make the job easy for you. Of course you, you have. 15 to 30 pounds? 15 to 30 pounds. 8 metres a leader? 8 metres a leader. So what you need out here. So what you need. Oh, right, rock, paper, scissors, who nets this? Nets it. Nets it. Oh, right. Nets it. I'll get enough to my eyes. I've got a risk. Shoot. I'm there, you're not in it. Sorry, Dave. Good luck, Good luck, <laughs> I might not be able to win one when it comes to choosing a swim, but when it's netting one of the gaffer's fish, I'll be you, Tom. Hey, get down there, Tom. Get yeah, down get down in there, there Tom. I'm going to lose your job. <laughs> right in the edge, Dovey's in there waiting to net it. And you've got, you've got a crowd of 20 waiting to see what pops up. You just don't know with this place what it's gonna be. You don't know. Role models, you two, aren't you? <laughs> They're the young kids Leading taking the up alcohol all over the all over no, Europe. We From around. Dream. <laughs> Spencer, that's what a carp looks like. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I can't 
Oh, 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 oh hello. Sh wow. Broken the rule, shouldn't have come out the, shouldn't have come out the water. It's 50 pound, eight ounces. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's a warning. It Sorry, mate. Sorry. <laughs> and a 50 pound unlocks stockies. another prize for you lot at home. That 50 pound prize is absolutely mega. A brand new set of black singles in the brand new singles bag. No monkey included though. But if you think that's good, you wouldn't believe what was just about to happen. Now, we left you to sort of get your left hand rod back out, Dan. Yeah. But you don't appear to have done that. No. He's kite, he's kiting right, and this what this. I don't know if it's this fish or. It doesn't feel like the line, does it? Then? Well, if you want me to do anything, just say the word. Do you want me to reel this in? Yeah, just wind that one. Can I hold this one, Dan? You can't hold two at once. <laughs> Someone, Someone have to hold it. Someone's had a beer. I'm not on. I'm not on that rod, Martin. Fishy's right down here. I'm just a really in you. Yeah, right, wind it in you. Get in that net. Come on, you're an original. Get in that net. Yeah! Yes! Get in there! Whoa! That ain't a rubbish one, is it? Not a rubbish car. That is not a rubbish one, that. It's the corner social! The fault, is it? Or is it 50? Mate, that scale on the back. Hang on. I'd be surprised if it was. Oh, that's the freak. I think that's the freak, you know. No, it's not the target. I thought it was the target. No, no, it's the freak, I think. It's got a scale on its right shoulder. That's target. I think it's the target. I think it is. I think it's the target. It's not. I think it is the target. That's scale, man. That's scale. Get his left flank up. How big is it? Just get his left flank up. We see it last time, Carl. Isn't it the freak? Yeah, that's the freak. Target. I'm sure it's left flank, Dan. I can see it from here. Yeah, right flank, back right. Yeah. If it is, mate, if it is that one. This is Dan's ultimate fish. He's called the target because it's Dan's target. I named it when it was 51 pound. You don't care about all that. It's a 60 pounder, so it's another prize unlocked. Merry Christmas. Oh, we need more when Tom out. Someone's <laughs> out of 60. Someone's out of 60. With the target being a known 60 pounder at this time of year, let's crack open that prize. One lucky winner will receive a brand new set of Kaizen Green rods when they are launched in the spring. 2712. <laughs> 62, 6. It's gotta be it, innit? It is it! Woo! It is it! <laughs> <laughs> that is unbelievable. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to buy another lake now. Oh, no, <laughs> don't tell Damien. No, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> do not do that. You're busy enough. Dan, you also need to buy more glasses because... Right. Spence. They, I can see They're my reading now. glasses, Spence. Oh, right. They're my reading but all glasses. The, these are my drunk up. glasses because I'm drunk, now I'm sober. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm keeping no, these. <laughs> Morale. <laughs> this is what the quarter social is all Happy about. Days. Look at that. One of the A team and everybody in attendance. Say something stupid, Spencer. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my darling. Monster. Get in there! Yes! Thank you, gentlemen. It's all going a bit wild on the main lake. Alamo has become the social central. Virtually everyone has reeled in to come round to the swim 
to have a bit of a social. Far too many beers are being consumed, but it's a lovely, lovely sunny day. Fair brass has had a 50 and a 60 pounder. And then Callum, on his very first trip to Gigantica, he landed one yesterday. He's got his rods out earlier, very tidily. And he's in to a fish after a little hook bait tweak. How are you feeling, Cal? Blue Army! Blue Army! <laughs> You might not have seen Cal before, he's a little bit of an unsung hero. He works at Corda in the, uh, what's the department called? Graphic design? Well, creative services room. Creative services. That just sounds like a made up title if ever I've heard one. <laughs> but that's where he works, making some of the wonderful little graphics that you see on some of the stuff that we produce. But he's also a very, very competent carp angler. Carp to over 50 pound from one of the embryo syndicates, Baston Big Lake. And here he is now, out of Gigantica, about to break his French PB, he doesn't even know it yet. <laughs> Hello, double take. Uh, I think I might have got it. Okay, well, I'm here to help, mate, if you need me to. Right, I'm gonna pick it up, because it's clearly got it. Yeah, just see where it's at. Let's just work out which way round it is. Only downside to uh, Calumet is he folds his real handles. <laughs> Okay, fish on the surface. You right netting, Cal? Get in now! Oh! Well done, mate. Thank you. Woo! Most lakes you wouldn't expect to get bites like this on days like this, flat calm, high pressure, really sunny. Um, but they love it like this on here. I think the deep water, it just heats up them bottom layers and uh, they just love feeding in it. Three ten, another chunky, stocky mirror. Again, grown on from an egg. That's three this afternoon. I've resisted the temptation to cast that rod again. The other two are still out on the spot, but it is getting dark now, so um, I need to get that one back out there. But for now, I am very happy. Give you a kissy. Mwah. Off you go to get bigger. A mega day it's been. I've worked for Dan for over 15 years. In that time, he's bought this lake, he's seen a fish at 51 pound that became his target, known as the target. And today is the day where not only has he ticked that one off, he's had a 50 pound common, he's just put back another 30 pounder. And I was about to close it for the day, go to bed. I had a crack off on my spawn. I've literally just flicked two hook baits back over the spot before I've put any bait out. Not even got the line into the bite alarm. And it's just started taking line. What an end to the day. Lovely. 
Bye. There we go, the perfect end today, a lovely mid-20 mirror. And let's just give you a let's just give you a little rundown of where we are with the Christmas gifts. Between the three of us, we are flying. At the end of day three, we've unlocked five of the eight prize bundles to give away. That includes the 20 pound, the 30, the 40, the 50, and even the 60 pound prize. Will we be able to give away the full prize board? Let's also see where we're at with our predictions and what we have caught so far. Fairbrass is off to a good start and it looks like he'll definitely hit his target. Dovey though has a bit of a hill to climb. See you in the morning. Well, I said we ended the day yesterday perfectly and I'm pleased to say that we've started today in exactly the same fashion. A lovely mirror, a smidge over 29 pound, but that's not all that's been out. I know Dovey's got one in the sling and Petal fishing over in the stock pond swim has had his first couple of bites of the trip. So there's another few carp to show you. Not sure what's been happening at the road lake. I've got to be honest, I didn't hear any bite alarms last night, but I did hear a lot of noises. Don't know what they're up to. Perhaps we'll check in on them and all. Carp on, I'm a long spot. I've got a fish down there in the sling that was caught on the short spot about two hours before light. And now I'm just sitting here, a beautiful morning, with a carp on. I was honestly thinking I might change these long rods shorter because for rod hours, that short spot's done more bites. A few different areas going. Dust. Beautiful. I've never once hoped for a double out of here, but seeing it's a small one, we may as well make it 18 pound, isn't it? Sorry, guys. It is. It's 22 pound. Soz, can't do anything about it. I'm not going to trouble him by getting him out of the water. I'm going to let him go. Let him get a little bit bigger to this one. Beautiful. You get a few nights in on these trips and you sort of found your feet. Hopefully you're getting bites. So Dan's in the groove, Dovey's in the groove. A few people now are getting regular bites and it just becomes a case of pressing repeat. And that's exactly what Dovey's doing in his swim right now. He's just had one, rod's back out. I'm assuming he's gonna put a few spots of bait over the top as well. And whilst we haven't done it yet, because it's the Christmas special, me and Dovey are gonna be popping along to the Lennox charity to give them some Christmas gifts. But as you're watching it, we'll have already done it. So here's what happened. Linz, we've worked together for a while now, but there'll be a lot of people that don't know what Lennox is and what you guys are doing here. So do you want to give us a little bit of an insight into yeah. what you guys so, are doing? Yeah, uh, so Lennox Children's Cancer Fund is a charity that's been going for 30 years and supports children diagnosed with cancer and their families across the UK. So the mission of the Lennox Charity is that uh, no child fights cancer alone and no, uh, no family has to, has to go through it on their own. We, we kind of all-encompassing hug to, to support them from diagnosis through treatment and beyond. That beyond is actually after a child rings the bell or sadly when a child passes away, you know, we're there for a family after that time. Mm. Like, you can't imagine how tough that is to go through, can you? 
to, so to like, hear. You, know, I'm, you see it all of the time. We, we've seen it once now with, with Ellis um, and obviously with, with the young girl here as well. But that is the toughest thing ever to go through. So to have somebody by their side and to help them through it financially and as just people to be around them as well, I think it's an amazing thing you're doing really. I think the emotional support is really, really key to our families. When, you, when you're faced with the possibility of losing your child, it's really, really hard to talk to family and friends about it. So although we start off with strangers, they can really offload to us, but yeah. then we become, we become really close. I mean, yeah. we've had phone calls three hours after a child's passed away. You know, you know they come to us before Unbearable, some of their families. So. Yeah. Now, when we've spoken before, I know that one of the things that the, the money that Corda helped to raise goes towards something that's called respite for the yes. parents. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, so we have two respite holiday homes, so one down in the New Forest and one, down, one up in Norfolk. And what we do is we send our families away for free for respite. Um, when your child's sick, one parent or two parents have to give up work. They don't get holiday together, they don't get time together as a family. So yeah. these respite breaks are really crucial for family ties. So sometimes family relationships break down. Um, giving them this crucial time away helps them make memories and Incredible. just time away from cancer and treatment and hospitals. So they're really, really vital. And you know, you guys, you know, supporting us the way you do, we get to send 200 families away a year, so it's quite incredible. Wow, as many as that? 200, yeah, 200 families a year we send away. So, wow. Yeah, we get some really, really beautiful feedback, and yeah, it really does actually save relationships. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's probably our, our, our biggest service. The biggest thing anybody can do for Lennox is talk to others, raise awareness, not just for a financial reason, but not enough families who have a child with cancer know about us. So it's, right, so help, it's helping, raise, to raise awareness. helping to raise awareness so that yeah. we can help more children. Yeah, of also, um, you know, donating, fundraising, having cake sales and dress down days at work. Anything. School. Anything like that yeah. to help raise awareness and raise funds. More funds we raise, the more kids we can help. So. I did hear this wasn't what we were going to talk about, but I heard there was a superhero fun run being yes. sorted out. Yes, so next June, we're going to be here, 5k superhero fun run. Right, well, be without Dovey knowing, because I mean, I do a little bit of running. Okay. Dovey probably hasn't run since he run a bar. <laughs> Sign us both up. Okay. We'll both done. do it. We'll, we'll rate, we'll, you know. Can we'll, we have Adele Boy and uh, Batman and Robin? You outfit? tell us. That's the <laughs> sign. There we go. Batman that is what we're going to be doing. Absolutely. And we'll do it the other way around. He's slightly <laughs> shorter, so we'll. It'll be Rodney, we'll make it the wrong way around. <laughs> no, that'd be brilliant. No, yeah. it'd be really good. And we're hoping to get lots of our families involved and just make it a really, really fun day. Yeah, we'll all come down for that, 100%. Yeah, that'd be grand. Nice no, one, thank you. Thank you. There we go. Cracking 32 and a half pounder. And that spot is just starting to kick off. So it's three bites up that long spot now. Bigger around the corner. Beautiful. You can probably tell by the amount of effort I'm putting into my casting now. But I'm going longer. It's lovely to have caught a few fish off of that short spot, but I just don't feel like I'm really getting anything going. And since I've been here, there's been lots of shows out at range. So I've had a lead about out there. I found a lovely area. We've sort of three nights in, four nights to go. I feel like trying to do something a bit different to what I'd normally do on Gigantic. And normally you stick to a spot, you stay, you stay sort of religious, keep to that same area and hope that you keep ticking bites off. And I've got to be honest, it's often worked for me. But I feel like making a change. I feel like trying to do something a little bit different. Uh, so let's, let's see what happens. I want to do us a favour. This music's a bit boring, can we? Step it up a bit, come on. It's always nice when you get an interruption during dinner. Dovey's playing one, and it's Lewis's 21st birthday, so there's a little surprise up at the lodge for him. You ain't gonna wanna miss this. I was two thirds of the way through eating the biggest block of lasagna I've ever tried in my whole entire life. I'll get a bite on my left hand and I've run here. I saw Spooner changing his spots earlier. His spoms were going absolutely everywhere. But I think it's a good decision for him to go long because the fish are out there. A little bit of instant karma then hit Dovey as it seemed his carp 
had decided to take out his two remaining rods. Fortunately, he had Callum and Wolfie on hand to help him out. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, actually, just leave that there, just tuck it away. Boom! Right on, Tommy. Right on the lights. Woo! Can't believe we got that in, actually. <laughs> that was really tangled up with the other lines. There she is, the old girl. About 23, 24 pound and a lovely way to round off a very successful day actually. There's been lots of bites around the lake. My spot is kicking off now, which is nice. Hopefully I can keep the momentum and get away from these smaller fish. Catch myself an 80 pounder. Thank you. <laughs> There we go, my gut was telling me to try that longer area. It's not something you always do at Gigantica, but I'm glad I did because with three nights to go, I now feel like I might get a few more of these. A lovely 28 pounder from the new zone. Been a little quieter for Dan and Dovey, but they've been getting bites in the day anyway, so hopefully they can nick a few today. However, it's been a very special night across both lakes. There's been PBs broken. There's people off the mark that had not managed to catch anything on this trip so far. 60 pounders from both lakes and we're going to uh, we're gonna have a little look at them now and give you an idea what some of these lads that you won't have seen before give you an idea exactly what they do for quarter as well the quarter social So that's 15 more spawns out. Before we talk about the fishing, I do have to say it is a proper giggle. You know, there's been loads of um, silliness going on and it's so nice to have people from all around the company all fishing together. And a lot of them, you know, you say hello to at work, but don't really spend that much time with. And it's a great opportunity to sort of put that to rights and uh, spend a bit more time with each other. And it's been absolutely brilliant for that. Seeing other people catching big ones is just off the scale good. But to talk to you about my tactics, I've gone two days now without a bite. And uh, whilst it was brilliant at the start, and um, you know I'm still reveling in the fact that I've had the target, um, greed is good. That's what we say here. You always want more. You want to make the most of every day. The long area just seems to have died down to almost nothing. They're turning up on it every now and again, but not with the same ferocity that they did at the start. And that baiting for two days and not fishing was absolutely the key to those first couple of bites. So what I'm doing tonight, I'm going short. I'm hearing fish down here all the time between me and Mike in Big Southerly. So what I've done is put the marker float out and I've cut a little hole in the, in the undergrowth down there so I can get down to it. Found a lovely rock to stand on and I'm able to catapult big pellets, 16 mil pellets and 15 mil boilies all around that float. And I've done the same thing on the left hand side where I caught the fish from those first two nights, 14 wraps, I've put the float out. Again, I've cut a little area gone down, I had to stand in the water this time, but with the catapult, 
those 15 mil pellets are sailing out to the float and going beyond it for me in the outside rod and I'm doing them short of the float again for me inside rod and I'm baiting on the float and behind it and quite a long way behind it so you imagine you've got half the size of a tennis court baited with the two solid bags fished amongst it I'm going to leave these rods fishing long until it's almost dark get all my bags tied in advance so if I get funny indications a fresh bag will go straight out Surely I'm due a bigger than I. You had a load last time you was out. Yeah. Do you want me to net the old girl or you alright? Right. You already got him on the cap? Yeah. I bet he's different to the stockies. You reckon? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite. A, yeah, it's mid 30 though, isn't it? Oh, oh, who's that? Who's done that? Fucking Neil Spooner. Here he is, cracking 34 pounder. An amazing fish, but surely I'm due one of the big ones next. Beautiful. We're having a lovely afternoon round in Dovey Swim. There's a bit of a tradition on the quarter social that Wednesday not only is it barbecue day but it's cheese and wine night as well which normally means that you take it easy through the day because you are gonna have a really good social in the evening we haven't taken it easy today it's been a bit carnage and I've had another bite and this may actually unlock another bundle he's right as much as I know he's taking the Michael we need a double or a 70 do you know what, viewers at home, I don't care which one it is, but we all hope it's a double. Sorry, great mate. <laughs> this though, is what the social's all about. Having a laugh with your mates. Unfortunately, Spencer's here as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Spenno. I love you too. You have got to be careful with Spence. He's genuinely and I don't say nice things about him very often, but he's genuinely one of the nicest human beings that this world has ever had the good grace of seeing. But he's also excitable like a shitting puppy. What do you really think of him? Fuck, I hate him. He bullies me. When no one's around, he throws me about on the bank and he, he's just horrible. Oh no, he does that to me in the sales office sometimes. So I've just had to ask him just to take a little step back because before you know it, it'll be up to his eyes trying to net it for me when it's at 100 yards out. Whoa! Excuse me, can I just get to my beard, please? Look it down there. Right, Spence, would you like to get into the water? Oh, God, you're so late. What? I'm, no, I said, would Don't you like get to? In, get in. No, I'm just saying we're getting to the oh. stage now where it could pop up. Bloody hell. And what? this is where the excitable little puppy dog might come in handy. Yes, boss. I'll <laughs> slip myself in the water for you. Like Gollum. Do I have to deal with? <laughs> give someone a job all them years ago, and all he, all he is desperate to do is for me to give him a P45. So all he, it's all he seems to want me to do. Look at it, just laying there, shelling a shelf. Shell it. Shelling. <laughs> shelling. It shells its shelf. It shells. It shells. It shells. Yeah. It's a beautiful <laughs> net. 250 pounds though. It's, a, it's an expensive net, but look at it. It does what it does. <laughs> Everyone should have one spring bowl. I've got a couple. You have a 42? A 46. A 46. This is 46. This is 46. 46. For the big carps. No? Don't I? Hey, Spoons, this is, this is a spring bowl. This is a spring bowl. It's a lovely spring bowl. If everyone can see, this can float on water. Look at that. <laughs> that is a lovely piece of kit. Put it on Spooner's vlog, no? It floats. It doesn't need even a float aid. It just floats on its own. Look at it. What? Can't wait to go home looking like I've been fried at least i have though saying that the cord of factor 50 to protect me all available in all good tackle shops if you haven't got that in your bag you need to get it 3.99 in all major retailers get a little 
little tube of it, get it in your bag for days like this, bloody needed. And a hat spoons, we do loads of them too, didn't we? <laughs> Not this one, admittedly. Look, there's a tube there. Who threw that at me? Literally at you. <laughs> get it on your head, especially if it looks like that. And let's not forget, Luke, all proceeds go to charity. Cord, they don't make money out of it. All proceeds go to charity. But the message is greater than that. Even if you don't want to spend 3 99 on Corda sun cream, buy sun cream. Just wear sunscreen. Exactly. Turned serious there, didn't we? We did, mate. Yeah. It's a serious matter, It though. is a serious matter. It's very serious. See, when, you, when you're saying it's very serious, you can't then put on an accent. Why? Because then it's not serious. Okay. But it is if you're in Holland. He's doing it again. Sorry. He's doing it again. <laughs> oh, what a day. Just take your time, mate. Thanks, Spencer. Keep your tip up. Not that one. Get my face bolted. <laughs> that hairline is nearly as bad as Dubby's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it comes. I look around there hoping Dubby was here and he's not. Never the same when he's not here to appreciate it. Well, when you come to this place, you dream of catching one of the originals, a common of 47.4, but you dream of doing it when you're surrounded by some of your mates. None of them could make it, <laughs> <laughs> but this lot will definitely do. You picked the joke, didn't you? Sorry. <laughs> Barbecue Night at Gigantica is always a favourite amongst the anglers, and on the Corda Social, so is Cheese and Wine Night. Last night's antics, the plan for me today is to stay in my swim, watch what's going on. I had a lovely day yesterday, catching a few fish, topped by that mega common. But, I did also unlock another prize bundle last night, because I had, unfortunately, not the 70 or 80 pounder that would unlock another big bundle, but I did catch a, an 18 pounder, which unlocks the double figure bundle. So more prizes to be had, and I'm just hoping now, as we end the Big Fish Thursday, a couple of nights to go, I've got two spots that are doing relatively consistent bites now. Just hope that that can carry on for the last 48 hours. And who knows? We might be able to have the full set and unlock them all. But it's not all down to me. Dovey's got another fish in the sling, and I've not heard from the gaffer this morning, so who knows? Unfortunately, it had been another quiet night for the gaffer but Dovey's carp ended up being the largest that he'd had so far and he seemed to be building some nice momentum. The same can be said for the guys on the road lake with fish coming thick and fast now from around the whole lake. Let's head into the gaffer's swim and check out his technology. The rig I'm using on this particular session is born of the underwater film that we made at Norton Disney um, earlier on this year. We changed quite a lot after getting completely turned over by the fish and the little changes we made made a big difference. 
And one of the most significant ones is we're using an anti-tangle sleeve pushed straight onto a size eight quick change swivel. So there is no hinge in the hook link. And that's great for anti-tangle, but it also pushes the hook link straight out in front of the lead every time. So when the fish sucks up the hook bait, it comes in contact with the lead sooner. And I use it absolutely all the time now. It's still fished as a running lead clip, so I'm squeezing the eye of that size eight quick change swivel just a little bit so it goes oval. It just about clicks into the lead clip but with the slightest amount of resistance. The fish shakes its head, the lead is sliding away. And these fish on this lake are very, very riggy. You're fishing at long range in deep water and they know how to get away with it. So a running lead clip seems to stop that happening because there's no anchor point for the fish to use to get rid of the hook. And I'm using a tournament heli lead. So the heli lead is for getting the distance. Obviously I'm fishing at nearly 120 yards, um, but with a ring on the top, it all just lays so beautifully on the bottom. That come from Tom Stokes. I didn't think it looked like that at all, but I was completely wrong. And uh, I've been using those leads ever since. Keeps everything nice and compact. It all lays perfectly flat on the bottom and um, it is absolutely nailing them. A short hook link as well. Between the two crimped loops, I started off with four and a half inches. I have dropped down to three and a half inches. So it's about five inches long, you know, with the hook on the end. Um, the spinner swivel at the end hasn't got a ring on it to keep it all nice and light. And I'm using size four long shank X's with the eye bent in a little bit, um, just to help them turn and catch hold that bit better. Made barbless, of course, because of the rules here. I'm with a D-rig kicker on the back to keep the bait and the hook separate. I think it's really important for the hook to turn better with the bait being separate from it. And hook bait wise, that's really important. I've employed a few different hook baits, a uh, mainline wafter in white, soaked in squid white, squid goo, that got me my first bite, that 50 pound common, and I'm trimming that down so that it looks like a chop. So I've taken the top off and the sides off. I put a little bit of lead wire uh, in the bottom of the bait just to hold the bottom of the bait down to the lake bed so it's not wafting around. I think, again, that's really important. And then the target, uh, we need to talk about the target again. That was on a fish meal bottom bait, just a, a hardened bottom bait with the top sliced off with a tiny little bit of a 10 mil white pop-up. So it's a little tiny topper. It's a snowman, but it's a really trimmed down one. I've also had a bite on a match the hatch, so a hardened bottom bait with all the sides trimmed off, top chopped off, and then drilled out just a tiny bit, and a little sliver about two mil deep of six mil cork has gone in the top. So when you drop it in a, uh, in a bowl of water, it sits around the same way every time, but it doesn't float. It's not a wafter. It's a bottom bait. And having it all pinned to the deck is really important for me as well. Now I've got a big blob of putty right in the middle of the hook link and that stopped from tangling around the main line by about 10 inches of dark matter rig tube. You don't want a long section because it really cuts the casting down. So just a bit longer. If you fold the hook link back on itself, it needs to be just a bit longer than that. So the hook link can't come in contact with the main line. That rarely happens with an anti-tangle sleeve fish the way I do, but it's just added security. And everything I use is brown to match the lake bed out there. It's a very sort of muddy brown bottom. I want everything as camouflaged as possible. So that is my presentation for fishing at range out in these swims. They very, very rarely tangle and they are very aggressive hookers of fish. Whilst that's sinking, I'll show you what we're putting out. There's a cat. Hello, kitty. Now, I did start off with one on a heli out there, like this one here. And I had one on a lead clip as well, but I felt that the left hand side of that spot was the best side, the firmest drop. That's where the leg clip was, but it was, it's the heli that had gone twice. So both switched over now to a heli. And there's a little look at one of the hook baits. That is a, that's a mainline cell cork dust wafter, trimmed down a little bit, but it's been soaked in a prototype goo. Chocolate flavor. Do you like it, Lou? Bit yeah. of chocolate goo and pink's been doing the bite. So let's get this one out there as well. The fish turned up on mass just beyond my spot about an hour and a half ago and I've been sitting on my hands thinking I've got to get one any second. And the left hand rod that's done most of my bites to be honest has picked up tight. And I've now either got a very heavy fish on or a fish with loads of weed. And obviously I prefer the first option. I've actually got a rod 
see it up against the trees over there, ready to put out straight after this. So I put out about three and a half kilos today, which is quite a lot of bait on a relatively small spot out there. So I know they've been feeding out there for an hour or so. If I do happen to get this in the net, I'm gonna whack that rod straight back out without any bait over the top of it. See if I can get another one. Spooner's got one on as well, so this has got to be an original. One of us deserves one soon. There's no cameramen about, but me and, me and uh, Callum are having a lovely little Blue Army social in the old swim. Blue Army! But now, Lewis is back in the swim. Of course he is. Ever consistent Trojan, Lewis Porter. He's like one of them annoying mosquitoes that swim around your head in the middle of the night and it's always there trying to get you to do extra stuff. How, how often does a mosquito swim? Swim in the air, like Banana Man used to, actually. Reference to the cup, brought it all back. What a segue. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. That is a cracking bit of fish. 38 and a half pound common. It's bigger than spooners. Dave Bendel's got his first one on in Coes. What a day. It's all going off. I suppose if you're only going to have one bite in the week so far, why not have an upper 50 common? That's the way Bendel does it. What a lovely carp. And it does appear now after what has been a week of amazing socialising, or five nights of amazing socialising, as the week's gone on, the antics are quieting down, the angling is getting that bit more serious. We approach the best moon phase of the week. We're approaching the big fish Thursday night. Everyone's getting their rod set now. And I've got a good feeling that there's gonna be a lovely few carp caught by the end of the trip across both lakes as well. It always happens time and time again. So I'm gonna get mine out, make sure they are absolutely spot on. Because you never know with this place, the fish of your dreams is only a bite away. Well, what a night. Nothing to report for me, but once again, a few bites around the lake. Dovey's had a, I think, a mid-30 common. <laughs> Jordan over in Treeline is off the mark, his first fish of the week. <laughs> but, like so many times on this place, you just stay steady, stay constant with what you're doing, and the rewards are there to be had. And talking rewards are there to be had. I did at the start of the week, obviously had the mega two time at over 70 pounds. But since then he's had 
literally nothing other than a couple of bream. But he's stayed true to the spot, he's kept baiting it, he's kept the rigs going out tidily, kept the bait topped up, and he's had his just rewards last night on that massive moon. First of all, he had a lovely 50 pounder, 50 pound common, I think. Um, and then this morning, he's had another bite, and he's got what he thinks, upper 50, 60 pounder. That will do. And that is why, with only 24 hours left, I'm still making sure the bait, the spot's topped up, get the rigs redone, because we've got some mega wind pushing onto this bank today. Hopefully, it brings a few fish with it. Yeah, man. <laughs> Oh, you swine. 39, 39, 6. Get in there. All three of these were cast out at 20 past four this morning. And it was a beautiful night last night. Flat calm, full moon was out. There was nothing, I had three rods fishing short and there was nothing showing in close at all. And I saw a fish show in the moonlight out on the long area. Just thought I need to get back out there again. So just landed that lovely 39.6 and um, this rod is away. So I'm pleased I went back out on the area, put no more bait out today at all. They've been showing out there. And um, I was right. Fairbrass's two fish now took him over his target for the week and what a pair of carp to do it with. Good work, Dan. It wasn't just his carp that were caught that day though. Multiple carp came out of the road lake including this mega mirror for Lewis and the very aptly named Corda Social Common for Captain Jack Barrow. Dovey had also continued ticking them off in Traz, but with less than 24 hours to go, could he hit his target? Right, as in true Gigantica tradition and quarter social tradition, all of those people that have caught a PB this week are soon to be lined up in front of the Gigantica sign to get themselves a very 
smelly congratulatory bucket of water. Now we had another little competition running throughout and that was the prize for the biggest fish across both lakes. And that I'm very pleased to say, not only was it a PB, Michael, your first 70 pounder, it was. you get the trophy for the biggest fish. Thank you very much. But there is even more good news for you. We said that only the fish that myself, Dan and Dovey caught would count to unlock the prize bundles. But seeing as we're not good enough to catch a 70 and this man did, we are going to unlock the top end bundle and someone is going to win. I'm only tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's having one anyway, but someone's going to win a power pour. And to enter, all you've got to do in the comments is put your very best stroke, worst Christmas jokes. Merry Christmas, everyone. Get by that sign, Michael. <laughs> Right, ready on three, boys. One, you got nothing. Two, two three, go. That's in Look at my socks. <laughs> Well, it's coming to the end of another amazing week at Gigantica. Mike is just thrashing out a spawn as we speak, trying to catch more big ones. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's fishing for a week with your mates. We all work together, but we're all friends as well. No! <laughs> no! Michael! 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 Everybody puts a massive amount of effort to keep the company running brilliantly all the way through the year. In every single department, they work like Trojans all the time. And it's lovely for me be able to say thank you for that and us do it in an environment where we can all enjoy the same thing and share the same experiences and seeing people catching absolute monsters and be blown away by it or even just catching their first gigantic carp and be blown away by it along with all the camaraderie and the amazing food and you know the wind ups and the whatsapp group and everything else that goes with it um, it's a really special week the best week of the year in my opinion it ticks all the boxes and um, yeah, I think we'll keep doing it pretty much uh, as long as there is a quarter, there will be a trip to Gigantica. So we'll see you next year. But before we do, I'm sure there's going to be some big ones out tonight. And whilst it was a pretty quiet night for most of us, it wasn't for Dovey. Five bites topped by the King Fully at how big? 47 pounds, four ounces. What a way to end the Spooners vlog. Have a wicked Christmas, everyone. And uh, let's go for a classic. We'll see you on the bank sometime. Merry Christmas, boys. <laughs> and girls, and thems, and Fish and fish and thems. And everyone, he's been a bit, oh, this has turned awkward, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs>